tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. <laughs> I'm in danger! Could Honey Badgers survive the Mesozoic? Or could the Mesozoic survive a Honey Badger? For this speculative ecology video, we'll be placing a thousand Melivora capensis, the indestructible internet sensation, into the Hell Creek formation of Cretaceous North America. We'll cover its diet, competition, and potential threats, and then see how it rates on the Thrive or Eaten Alive scale. A 1 means that the group would be swiftly wiped out. A 5 means that they'd maintain a stable population without making too many waves. And a 10 means they'd completely dominate their niche and outcompete all their native equivalents. Let's take a quick look at the honey badger's native habitat to see what it's adapted to. They live all over Africa, India, and other parts of Asia, generally thriving in hot and arid areas as well as humid ones. They live alone, which makes sense given their incredible aggression. They'll viciously strike any animal that gets too close, even if the intruder is dozens of times their own size. Honey badgers will fight off lions, hyenas, and buffalo, and some descriptions indicate that they've even killed buffalo and wildebeest by uh, hitting where it hurts. They have incredibly varied diets, and can survive off almost anything. Typical foods like birds, eggs, and rodents make sense, but these guys will chow down on scorpions, venomous snakes, spiders, aardwolves, and foxes. They're not limited to meat, also snacking on berries and various plants, in addition to honey. And their stomachs aren't the only thing about them practically made of iron. Their claws are sharp and thick, allowing them to dig in the toughest terrain and form defensible burrows. New mothers will take their young to fresh burrows every few days, never staying in one area for very long, and will teach and protect their offspring for over a year. They usually have a maximum of about two cubs at a time. It's clear that honey badgers are as tough as nails, but what about their destination? The Hell Creek Formation definitely earned its name. A huge area that covers parts of multiple states today, it was a subtropical wetland in the late Cretaceous period. It was the stomping ground for the most famous dinosaurs of all time, Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops. Let's check out the badger's diet first. Angiosperms, or flowering plants, were the dominant forms of plant life in Hell Creek. Fruits would be very common and easily available, including ancient variants of mulberries. Frogs and salamanders thrived in the primeval floodplain, making great meal options in addition to the plentiful primitive birds, turtles, snakes, and lizards. Upon arriving, the honey badger would be confused at how wet everything was, and that might interfere with its burrow-making ability at first, but it would be thrilled at the high availability of small vertebrates to chomp on. And for the particularly brave individuals, some larger animals might be on the menu. Adult Pachycephalosaurus was about the size of a large lion, quite a bit bigger than the honey badger's typical mammalian prey, but well within a reasonable size when young. Ornithomimid dinosaurs, like Ornithomimus, may have been too fast, but juveniles wouldn't be off the menu when injured. Even the glorious chicken parrot Anzu would have needed to carefully guard its young and eggs from the ravenous mustelid. The honey badger is loving its food options, but what about the competition? Small carnivores in the area include the aforementioned ornithomimids and chicken parrots, which would also be going after the buffet of small vertebrates in the area. The biggest obstacles would be from the small dromaeosaur Acheroraptor and the troodontid Pectinodon, both of which were larger than Melivora capensis. These fast, toothy predators would be targeting the same prey as the badger and would reproduce far more quickly, laying lots of eggs and generating a ton of young. The honey badger's loose skin, sharp teeth, and fierce attitude would let it steal its fair share of kills, but it would likely be severely outnumbered in its new environment. It would need to fight for its right to eat all it could. Some of its competition would also come from relatively close cousins, the mammals of the Cretaceous. Multituberculates, a group of rat to possum-sized mammals with gigantic molars, were everywhere during this time period and would have faced off directly against their rival from the future. We don't know much about their soft tissue, so direct comparison is difficult, but the niche of small omnivorous mammal is clearly in high demand. There will be blood, and based on what we know about honey badger's behavior and diet, I'd put money on it winning the vast majority of confrontations with its Cretaceous counterparts. Honey badgers kill and eat aardwolves, which are their own size, and are famous for being one of the most aggressive and brutal animals, well, ever. They'd likely outcompete their relatives and probably eat them in the process. Future's now, old man. How about threats? The biggest danger in Hell Creek would be to the young, which would be protected by the mother inside rotating burrows. However, the terrain in the floodplain isn't as suitable for digging hard burrows and would limit territory choices somewhat for mothers. 
Small and large dromaeosaurids, troodontids, and juvenile tyrannosaurs would all be interested in making a meal out of the new furry member of their environment, and some of them would be armed with stronger bites than the lions and hyenas that the badgers used to scaring off. What the honey badger has going for it is how dangerous it is pound for pound. When we see lions attacking Melivore in the modern day, the honey badger doesn't need to kill its predators to escape, it just needs to convince them that it's not worth the effort. Its claws, teeth, and bad attitude do an excellent job of advertising what a difficult meal it would be. Even hunting dogs today struggle to bring them down, since their skin is so loose and thick it's difficult to properly grasp. This allows them to turn around even when pinned down and bite their rivals or attackers. Honestly, when looking at the wide array of available food sources in Hell Creek, the sparse competition the badger would encounter, and its insane ability to repel even huge predators, Melivora capensis seems like nearly the perfect candidate to thrive in the Cretaceous. It's a great size to duck under the radar while easily sustaining itself on the diverse prey items. It exhibits advanced parental care, and it's one of the best fighters in the animal kingdom. We give it a 9. The only thing holding it back is the swampy terrain, which somewhat limits its ability to protect its young in burrows. If transported to Hell Creek, a population of honey badgers would spread quickly and refuse to budge. Their generalist diet and small body mass would make them even great candidates to survive the KPG extinction, able to scavenge for centuries and eventually radiate into alternate forms. After the asteroid dust settled, we could see gigantic wolf-like variants of these terminator weasels, radiating into the apex predator niche. No longer content with being the little guy, they develop into some of the most savage predators the world had ever seen. Subscribe for more speculative ecology and paleontology videos like this one. Check out the Mega Theropod and Giant Mammal series if you haven't already, and join the channel to help support what I do. Thank you for watching. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.